Right then, gang. So the next step in all of this is to hash a user's password when they sign up so that we're not storing their plain text password in the database like this, but instead we're storing a hashed version of the password so that if the database is compromised in the future and the data exposed, then the user's passwords will still be hashed and protected. So to do this, we'll be using a popular hashing package called Bcrypt and something called a mongoose hook in our model. So in this lesson, I just want to explain the second part, the mongoose hook, and then we'll look at Bcrypt and actually hashing the password in the next video. So a mongoose hook is a special function which fires after a certain mongoose event happens. For example, we could make a hook which fires a function after new documents are saved to the database or deleted from the database, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's run through a couple of simple examples. So first of all, what I want to do is tell mongoose to fire a function after a new user has been saved to the database. So to do that, we're gonna take the user schema and we're going to use a method called post. Now, this does not refer to a post request. It refers to something happening after something else has happened, like post saving, then fire a function. So the first argument inside this function is the event that occurs. So we're saying after a save event occurs, then I want to fire a function. So this function will fire whenever we've saved a new document to the database. So inside here, we get a couple of different arguments. First of all, the document which was saved, and then also the next method. Now, this is a bit like when we create custom middleware. At the end of it, we have to say next to go to the next middleware in the stack. If we leave this out, then the code is just gonna get hung here because it won't move on, and we probably won't get a response, and I'll demo that in a minute. But First of all, what I'm gonna do is just log to the console here. So console.log and we'll say new user was created and saved. And then over here, I'm gonna output the doc as well. So let me save this. I'm not firing the next function, but if we come over here, we need to change, oops, we need postman. We need to change this because it's not unique anymore. So I'm gonna change this to toad at google.com and I'm gonna to try to sign up. Now, at the minute, we're not getting any kind of response, and that's because, like I said, we're not using the next method. Now, if we open up the console, we can still see this new user was created and the user. So this down here is all working. We're just hanging here, then we're not doing anything else. We're not moving on because we're not calling the next method. We always have to do that at the end of any kind of mongoose middleware or hook. So let us now call the next method. And by the way, you can still see that hanging right here. But if we save this now and then come over here and try to send this again, in fact, we can't do this because this will still probably have been saved to the database. So let me check that by, let's just minimize this and go to the database and refresh. We're probably going to see that that email has now been taken up. Um, yes, we can see toad at google.com. So even though we didn't get a response, we still saved it because this happens after the save event, right? It's just that we're not firing next and we're not sending that response then to the client. So it's still saved and we need a new email now for this to work. So... Let me say, instead of Toad, we'll go with another Mario character, Peach. All right, so send this, and hopefully, yeah, we now get a response because we called next over here, all right? So this is firing after the documents have been saved to the database. So that's one way of working. What if we want to do something before something happens? So what if, in my case, I wanted to fire a function before a document was saved? Well, let me do a comment first of all. Fire a function before doc saved to DB. And then I'm gonna say user schema. And this time, instead of post, we need to use a different hook, pre. So that just means before, right? So before saving, then we're gonna fire a function. And by the way, I'm using a normal function here, not an arrow function, because I want to use the this keyword to refer to the instance of the user that we're trying to create. So this inside this function refers to the user instance. You know, like in app.js, we create, or rather not app.js, 
what we're talking about. Inside the auth controller, we create this thing right here, this instance, basically, that creates a new instance of a user object locally and then saves it behind the scene. We get access to that instance of the object locally here before it's saved to the database. And that's what this refers to right here. If we used an arrow function instead of this, then we won't have the value available to us. Okay, so we don't get the document inside here because it's not yet been saved to the database. This is running before we save it to the database. All we get inside here now is the next method, which we still need to call at the end, okay? Now, before we do that, I'm gonna log something to the console. I'll say console.log and we'll say user about to be created and saved and then we'll output this, which refers to the local instance of the user before we've saved it to the database. So let me save that now, and let's try another character, Yoshi, and send that request. Now, this all works. It's fired back to that user for us, and if we take a look over here in the console, we should see two things, user about to be created and saved, and the local version of the user, which is this, and then new user was created and saved after we've saved it to the database with that user right here. And notice we don't have this up here because we only get this property after the database creates that user. So you can also fire functions either before or after other events too. For example, you could replace save with something like remove. Now, if you want to learn more about the different things you can do with hooks, definitely check out the docs. I'll leave the link to that down below. And now we know about these hooks. In the next video, we're going to use this pre-hook right here to hash passwords before we save users to the database. So when we save that user, the password will be hashed and not the plain text password they provide us with.